This is Quinn Bowes, the father of the innocent 11-week-old baby, Parker. In Pakoda, Indiana, where family bonds should be unbreakable, Quinn's actions redefined family feud in the most tragic manner. He was arrested for the murder of his son, Parker, whose life was abruptly stolen by an unthinkable act of violence. Initially, Quinn tried to paint a picture of an accidental fall from the crib, blaming it for Parker's fatal head trauma. But the horrifying truth emerged, shattering any remnants of doubt. Officials armed with the facts ruled out Quinn's feeble excuse. They boldly declared that the actual cause of Parker's demise was a brutal and intentional blow to the head, a revelation that pierced the hearts of everyone present. Quinn was held accountable for his horrible crime and received a 20-year prison sentence and five years of probation through a plea agreement for a level two felony charge. However, fate had another surprise waiting in the wings. Jeremiah Hartley, Baby Parker's uncle, unleashed his fury, delivering a decisive blow to Quinn's face in symbolic pursuit of justice for the innocent life taken. The law intervened swiftly, giving Jeremiah an unexpected sentence of six months in prison for battery charges and retaliation, reminding us that justice must be fair even in the face of immense pain and anger. This tragic tale reminds us that families, usually a haven of love and trust, can become a nightmare of vengeance when confronted with unbearable loss. The pain of losing a child is unbearable. Because of him, I've lost trust in everyone, Parker's mom. It's a gruesome case. I cannot even imagine um, what that little boy was going through. This is Deshaun Brown, a person who is responsible for brutally taking down two innocent lives. This shocking crime rocked the community in Hamilton County, Cincinnati. He chose to kill Nilo in an incredibly barbaric method. And I just... I still have nightmares about this. A security guard's chilling discovery, a body bag, prompts a frantic 911 call. They find Natisha Lattimore inside, but her three-year-old son, Nilo, remains missing. Unveiling the truth, it's revealed that Natisha's boyfriend, Deshaun, stabbed her and disposed of Nilo's body in a river concealed in a stroller. You deserve the death penalty for what you did to my grandson and my daughter. You deserve the death penalty. No mercy, none. Deshaun was cunning. He disguised Nilo's body as clothes in an Uber. In grief and fury, Nilo's father, Antoine, delivers a resounding blow to Deshaun in court, emerging as an unexpected hero. However, even amidst the chaos, justice remains steadfast. Deshaun Brown now awaits trial, facing the grave consequences of his actions, including the possibility of the death penalty. This harrowing tale is a stark reminder of murder's darkest depths, a sin that stains humanity's soul. In the wake of this tragedy, the community is left grappling with the realization that evil can lurk even within familiar faces. The loss of two innocent lives reverberates, forever etching a sad chapter in the collective memory. The opportunity to listen to the testimony of the medical examiner who testified that this child had over 50 injuries and they were at various stages of healing. This is Clifford Thomas and Jasmine Gordon. Because of them, Detroit, a city known for its dangerous encounters, witnessed an unspeakable horror involving a little girl. This chilling tale began with three-year-old Jamila, whose playtime turned into a race against time as she was rushed to the hospital. Her fragile body bore heart-wrenching evidence of abuse, abrasions, bleeding, pneumonia, and a torn pancreas. Tragically, Jamila couldn't survive the torment she endured under the care of those meant to protect her. There was an abrasion on her right arm, 
There were healing abrasions on the forehead, the right temple region, the chest, the upper back, and the lower back. Dr. Kilak Kesha, a forensic pathologist. The full extent of Jamila's suffering was revealed in court, painting a horrifying picture of Gordon and Thomas's actions. However, you loved her so much, you didn't take her to the hospital when you saw that she was not breathing in this car. Instead, you stopped by a job of the mother to pick her up so that she could take this child to the hospital. Jasmine was sentenced to 14 to 25 years for child abuse and six to 15 years for involuntary manslaughter. Clifford received five to 15 years for his involvement in involuntary manslaughter. However, the courtroom drama didn't end there. Amidst the charged atmosphere, Jamila's father, Dwayne Smith, couldn't contain his anguish. He unleashed his fury on Clifford Thomas with a powerful blow, a symbol of the pain and vengeance a grieving father felt for his baby girl. In the heart of Detroit's Hall of Justice, a story of unimaginable darkness and the pursuit of justice unfolded. It serves as a chilling reminder that even in the face of unimaginable horror, some will fight relentlessly for the innocent souls lost to the depths of human depravity. In the picturesque town of Whitesburg, Kentucky, where courtrooms often mirrored wild wrestling rings, the community's warmth and hospitality were overshadowed by the actions of one man, Jerome Boggs. Jerome's fateful journey began innocently enough, seeking drugs from Timothy Cook. However, their encounter ended in a shocking tragedy as Jerome left Timothy and his innocent four-year-old son, TJ, lifeless, their bodies bearing chilling bullet wounds. The judge's voice thundered with disdain within the courtroom's sullen confines. Jerome Boggs, you disgust me, he denounced. If anyone deserves the death penalty, it is you. You are unworthy of decent company. Jerome faced many charges, including murder, robbery, burglary, and drug trafficking. The gavel struck, sealing his fate with two consecutive life terms, plus an additional 70 years behind bars. Meanwhile, his wife, implicated as an accomplice, received a 10-year sentence but secured early release through good behavior. Yet in a dramatic twist, justice took a different form when three vengeful members of the Cook family retaliated against Jerome in the very heart of the courtroom, underscoring the depth of their thirst for retribution. The chilling tale of Jerome Boggs serves as a haunting reminder that darkness can infiltrate even the most welcoming communities, fracturing their tranquility and leaving scars that may never fully fade. We've let my man, we've had four years. He can give, him, give her three minutes to say what she needs to say. I was able to sit down with Mr. Madden and his family and discuss the offer and the ins and outs of what was happening. Defense attorney Tom Griffiths. This is Timothy Madden, who stood accused of committing a heinous crime, raping and murdering a precious seven-year-old girl. The tragic incident unfolded on November 14th, 2015. If they find the right uh, person, I will come out and I will, like I said, sue everybody that slandered my name and put me where I'm at today. Kentucky's courtroom was enveloped in unimaginable grief where the defendant was, and a devastated mother sobbed uncontrollably. But the 38-year-old man of five pleaded not guilty. The weight of the evidence against him was damning, with police confirming that his DNA had been found on the lifeless body of little Gabriella Doolin. Judge Martha Harrison's voice filled the room, her words carrying the weight of justice. She informed Madden that he could face the death penalty for his alleged crimes and set his bail at a staggering $1 million. The tragic events had unfolded during a Kentucky high school football game where Gabriella and her family were in attendance. Within a short period, the young girl vanished, leaving her loved ones in panic. 
Tragically, just 25 minutes after she was reported missing, Gabriella's lifeless body was discovered in a nearby creek hidden within the wooded area behind the school. Because of you, we lost our baby girl. Our boys lost their sister before she was even eight years old. The entire community was shattered by the senseless act of violence, clinging to each other for support and desperately seeking answers. On October 23rd, 2019, Madden received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Mr. Madden entered the plea because it was the right thing to do for himself, the victim's family, and everybody involved, including the community. Madden's attorney, Tom Griffiths, in a press conference. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.